Howdy, this is David Grosher, Texas Tax and Lawman, back talking about the basic legal documentation that comprises a limited liability company. Remember last time we discussed that an LLC is an entity created according to state law that pays tax to a state and to the federal government. While these filings vary from state to state, each LLC generally has the same basic documents. Think of this list like a general description of a pickup truck. It has four wheels, a cab, a bed of some sort, a motor, transmissions, brakes, and steering controls. Some have more bells and whistles, while some are just super simple. LLCs are the same way. We have to look at their various parts and pieces to know how they are supposed to function. Many clients come to me and tell me that they created their own LLC or started one through an online company, only discover that the way they equipped their LLC is not fit for their particular purpose. They said they wanted a diesel truck with four doors to carry a crew and haul a big load. They want one of those big, heavy-duty, three-quarter ton monsters. But they bring me their docks, and all they have is a broken-down Datsun, and they just don't understand why they're paying too much tax or not getting the benefits they want. Both of these are LLCs, but not all LLCs are created equally, just like all trucks are not created equally. Let's look at a list of the components of an LLC and understand how changing these components can give you very different results from one LLC to another, just like the difference between a monster truck and a mini truck. Certificate of Formation. In the old days, most states called this document your Articles of Organization or Articles of Incorporation. This Certificate of Formation should define some critical items regarding your company. Your business purpose. Why was the entity created? Some states let us choose any and all business. Other states make us define a limited purpose. Managed by members or managed by managers. You have to decide who is in charge in the process for making decision. This may also impact your federal tax filings regarding the active or passive nature of the business and the participation of the members. Life of the business. Most states let you choose perpetual life, meaning the business exists until shut down. Other states only let you create the company for a term of years. Registered agent. If you paid a service for your LLC, they probably listed themselves as the registered agent and charge you a fee each year to perform this function for you. You need to decide if that has value or not. Business address. You have to list the address for your business, and in most states, this has to be a physical location and not a post office box. Certificate of Filing. This is usually a letter that comes with a certificate of formation acknowledging the creation and the filing date of the LLC. The first two documents are public documents placed on file with the state. The following documents are private documents executed between the various members and managers of the LLC and are generally kept in the company book. Your regulations, your operating agreement. The regulations are the heart of the LLC. This is where you specify the engine and transmission for the company. One size does not fit all, and our firm has many different operating agreements we use for various different LLC structures and operations. For complex LLCs, these operating agreements are customized and negotiated between the members, investors, and founders. These regulations define who gets paid what, when and how much. Your organizational meeting minutes. These are also called the initial meeting minutes and recite the history and formation of the LLC. These minutes are not required to be kept but are very useful for communicating critical information to banks and financial institutions about who has the power and authority to run and operate the LLC. Certificates of Ownership. For some companies, we actually order and issue membership certificates that look like stock certificates, stating the member's name, the ownership percentage in the company. For many investors, this is a neat way to have a visual representation of their investment, but it is not required for an LLC. A company book. 
For our clients, we generally order a custom printed company book to keep all of these documents. Other business organizations like corporations are required by law to keep company books, including annual meeting minutes of shareholders and board meetings. LLCs are generally exempt from having to keep these meetings. However, meeting minutes are a great tool to record significant decisions, changes, or moments in the life of your LLC, like raising capital, adding a new member, or transitioning to new leadership, or the next generation. Your company seal. In the old days, all corporations were required to have a corporate seal. This was generally a squeeze embosser that physically imprinted the company seal on the documents. This is not required in every state, but some states still require entities, including LLCs, to seal their corporate documents. Beyond the state filings, every LLC has to file a Form SS4 and elect how it is going to be treated for federal tax purposes. This is called an EIN application. While most people think this is a perfunctory form, it can cause unintended consequences because this form does the following. It gives you an EIN or employer identification number for your entity. This is the number you use to pay payroll and to file tax returns for the LLC. Two, it determines when your return is due. The way and when you submit this form determines when you're supposed to file a tax return and when you will owe late fees if you do not. Your IRS address. While the state mail will mail information to the registered address in your certificate of formation. The IRS will mail your federal tax information to the address on the SS4. Make sure you put the right address. And the type of taxation. This is the big one. Because an LLC has a right to check the box, answering these questions correctly can determine whether you get a Ford F-150 or a Fiat mini truck. You better get this one right. I know that's a lot of technical data. Don't stress about it. If you look at your documents and you're missing most of these pieces, my team and I often take broken and incomplete crates of truck parts and turn them into lean, mean, money-making machines. If you need help getting your LLC working right, give us a call. And until next time, adios. Texas Tax and Lawman Legal Disclaimer. Hey, I'm a lawyer. You know I have to have some lawyer mumbo jumbo. This is a general information video, not client attorney privilege information. The content is information only and is not directed to any specific facts or circumstances and cannot be relied upon as a legal opinion, even though that would be nice and save you a trip to the lawyer. If you have a specific legal question, feel free to contact David Gross directly or seek qualified legal or tax counsel in your state of residence, state of mind, or whatever place you call home.